Hey, before we get into it, Ballarat, I'm going to be there on Saturday the 13th. Uh, that's this Saturday. Then the next week, I'm going to Warnable and then Shepparton, and then the Australian tour is done, and the UK tour starts in August. I've got two shows in London, one sold out already. Then we've got Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester. One of those is full. Uh, there's a new one added. Then we've got Liverpool and Leeds and Newcastle and Glasgow, and I think we're adding Dublin and Belfast very soon. Loosebeers.com, get your tickets. They're selling really fast and uh, I cannot wait to get over to the UK. See you there. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 345 of the Speared Sunday's podcast. Very important. 44. Very Im- What? 44? It says 44. Oh, I just assumed you hadn't updated it, so I added an extra one. <laughs> so, But, you know, we're both on top of it. Well, <laughs> one of us is. I'm not. Episode 344, I'm trying to see. See, that's how many mistakes get made here that I'm just... Whenever Keelan does something, I'm just <laughs> assuming that it's been done incorrectly. I'm trying to preempt Keelan mistakes. And I feel like Keelan's trying to preempt Lewis mistakes. And that causes a lot of mistakes, <laughs> which causes a lot more preempting. Anyway, this is very important, okay? I, I'm i here to tell you that you need to really need to pay attention to me when I say this, okay? Are you listening? Are you paying attention? I can't say much. But something very, very funny is about to happen very, very soon. Keelan, you know what I'm talking about. I do, yes. Now, if you've seen me live, all right, don't write it down. Don't, don't put it in the comments, all right? But I'm telling you that it's happening very soon and it's very funny. And it's going to become immediately obvious what I have done. <laughs> and it's very funny. And yes... It's one of those things that I've done, okay? Now, that's all I can say without giving it away, not to you, but to, you know, you know what I'm you know what I'm talking about. I've done it again. It's been done, and we're just waiting because there's not it's out of my control. And that's all I'm going to say, but I want you to know at some point you're going to you're going to see. Isn't that right? That's right. And that's all we'll say. My my lips are zipped. But very soon. <laughs> anyway, I, I just got back from Tasmania. I did some Tassie shows. And let, let me tell you, all right, Hobart, the Hobart show. Now, that's a city I should have gone to. I, and I'm not saying that the Launceston show was bad. Absolutely not. It was a great show if you look at it in all areas other than financially. Because, <laughs> because the, the, the audience loved it. Oh, I don't know if you could call it an audience, but the people that were the people that did show up, they they had a great time. The the show, I performed it well. Did I perform it to <laughs> enough people to justify even getting on the fucking bus? <laughs> no, probably not. Look, we'll put things into perspective here. All right, every show that I have done, I think, on this tour, has been sold out. I think. Is that true? I haven't been to any. Oh, well, it's true. I believe (laughs) it's true so far. Hobart, full. Loved it. We did a little brewery. Wasn't a big show, but it was was stacked. It was packed. Great show. Launceston, all right, we had a look and we were like, look, I don't know how many people follow me in Launceston. Spoiler alert, fuck all. But at the time, I knew it was quite small. We're looking at theatres, and it's a very small place. And I was like, well, I'm going all the way to Tasmania. I love Tassie. I've got a friend in Launceston. It's a beautiful place. Let's just book the smallest venue we can find. And, you know, if we cover costs, it's a win. We lost. (laughs) And the smallest venue we could find, we thought was 200 people. And I thought, there's no way I'm selling 200 tickets in Launceston. Like, I, I would be really happy with 80. God, I would have been happy with 80. <laughs> but the 200-seater was cheaper than a smaller place, so we were like, oh, well, we know we're not going to fill it, but if we get 80 in there, that's almost half full. We'll put them all at the front, and it'll be okay. We get to the theatre in Launceston, uh, I'd sold 18 tickets. <laughs> 18 tickets. And don't get me wrong. 
I'm very, very happy to those people that decided to attend, the 18 of you. That's great. And I'm very, very appreciative to you. And I love that. What I wasn't happy with was getting on the bus knowing that I'd sold 18 tickets and being like, this is going to be a disaster. This is going to be so embarrassing. That's not even 10% of the 200-seat theater that we've that we've booked. This is going to be a fucking disaster. And then I got to the theater and found out that it was actually a 400-seater. <laughs> I get there, I'm like, what the fuck? This looks like 300 seats. And the guy goes, actually, it's 400. I went, what? And you didn't have a sound tech. No sound tech. It was just me going, oh, what the fuck? Dude, I, I, you know what I did? I filled one and a half rows. <laughs> actually, that's not true. Because we, we blocked off the wings. So we, <laughs> so we almost filled one row. And that ended up being one and a half of the middle rows. God, the silence in that fucking giant theater. That's the biggest theater that I've booked on this tour. Why would I, why would I, who's someone's getting fired? If, if I, if anyone worked for me and if, in, and if someone else made the decision to book that theater, Boy, if someone else made that decision, they'd be in big trouble. But it was me, so I just have to remember it in the shower. Like walking into that giant theater and being like, oh fuck. You know, because it's one of those one of those rare occasions where, you know, when 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 you've when you're worried about something and people are like, it's never as bad as you think it is. <laughs> and that's usually true, but every now and then it's actually much worse. <laughs> It's actually twice as bad as you thought it was going to be. The show was great. The show was good. The audience that was there, they were great. The first thing I said was, look, I thought there would be more people here too. (laughs) (laughs) There were more people on the fucking bus that I took to get to Launceston than were at my show. The bus was packed. They managed to sell all their fucking tickets. You know, I got on the bus... And I got, and I and I was I knew it was going to be a shit trip because I got I got there to the bus on time. All right, the bus left at ten. I got there at nine fifty eight. I walk in the office. The woman gives me a foul look, and she's like, "What are you here for?" And I went, "Oh, I'm here to catch the bus." She goes, "Do you have a ticket?" I said, "Yes." There's a bunch of people in the lobby, and she goes, "Oh, next time maybe get here a little bit earlier because I almost gave your ticket away." And I said, oh, well, lucky it's not 10, huh? The bus was half full. As soon as I arrived with my ticket, I saw six people sigh. They must have been waiting. They didn't buy tickets. Sucked in. Should have got here at, should have made me get there at 10.01. Maybe you would have had my seat. I chuck my bag on the bus. I get on the bus. And it's only half full. You know when a train or a bus fills up? And it's just single people sitting on the seat and then every aisle seat is left open. It was that. And I'm a fucking huge person. So I'm looking for the smallest person to sit next to. So I'm the, I'm the least inconvenience. Because I'm not one of those, I'm, you know, I've sat next to some real fucking ham planets who have spilled into my fucking seat. And it's made me want to, it's made me want to kill the driver. I don't do that. I'm a big person and I understand that that's not your problem. So when I get on a plane or a bus or public transport, which happens frequently because I'm 30 with no license, I'll stick my long limbs in the aisle like this. All right. I'll, I'll trip up a mother in a pram before I spill into your seat because I've got some fucking morals and ethics in me. All right. <clears throat> However, no one knows that before I sit down so everyone is just staring at me going please don't sit next to me please don't sit next to me and I'm scanning for a seat because I think the bus is like half full so I'm scanning for an empty two-seater that I could squeeze into which would have been a a stretch for me or a cramp even if the bus wasn't fully sold out which I later found out that it was right and then eventually there's no there's no seats so I just have to pick an aisle next to the smallest person I saw a tiny Asian girl. I thought, look, I don't want to freak her out. 
Because that's another thing, you know? If there's a bunch of aisle seats, you got to pick the one with next to the bloke instead of the lone woman because you don't want to scare her. Now, I didn't know that it was going to be fully fucking full. I, I wish I terrified that Asian tourist. All right? Keelan loves to do it for fun. Ooh. <laughs> That's a real bad habit you have. Yeah. Walking past tourists and going, oh, <laughs> scaring the shit out of them. I banned him from doing it in my presence. But really funny, I still do. I don't do it to people walking anymore, but if they're on scooters, you know those electric scooters? I'll go, ah! <laughs> That's a good one. That is funny. That is good. Anyone fallen off and broke, smashed their teeth? No, but... It's soon. Yeah. Fingers it's crossed. It's so funny to watch them go <gasps> and yeah. wobble. Mm, the, the fear wobbles. You've <laughs> heard of the speed wobbles. Here's the fear wobbles. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on this bus <laughs> and I just pick the smallest guy. And I'm a courteous motherfucker. I'm nice. So I go up to the guy. I'm like, hey, can I sit here? And he looks at me and goes, <sighs> and I wanted to put my head hands around his fucking bald head and go, I sold 18 tickets in Launceston. I don't want to be on the bus either. I'll fucking kill us both, dude. I'd rather be in a cell. It's sold out. Why are you taking the bus? Oh, because I'm <laughs> poor. Because I sold 18 tickets to Launceston. You think I'm going to get on a fucking plane? I'll just get an Uber. The fucking venue cost me $1,500. I'm already losing 500 bucks going there. That's why. Because the bus was $30. And I'm already making negative 600. Oh, why'd you get the bus? Because I'm poor. Because I spent 40 grand on a fucking head. I don't have the luxury to get on planes to fly to Launceston. I should have cancelled it, but I can afford that even less. You know, after the show, one of the guys that came by himself, wish he brought 300 friends. Huh? Fucking loser. I would have brought 300 friends. Sorry, 360, because it was an, a 380-seater. And I take photos with everyone, mm. and everyone was lovely, right? It was, it was a great show. But on the way out, this guy was like, hey, man, next time, try the pub. <laughs> <laughs> And what was what was great about that was he wasn't being mean. <laughs> like he was actually like, dude, I wish I knew that you can't sell tickets in Launceston. You know what's so fucking fucked? Is that I've sold more tickets in a small town in a country that I've never been to three months in the future than I did in Launceston the second time I've went there. I used to live in Tasmania. I'm a member of the Tasmanian Devils AFL team. Show out and support. Look, whatever. What do you think they thought when they rocked up? Fuck. They were like, oh, <laughs> I must be really early. Maybe I didn't read the ticket, <laughs> ticket time properly. So could you fucking imagine? You know, hey, anyone else would have cancelled it. Why are they starting the show? No one's here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the fucking, the fucking silence <laughs> as the audience, because, you know, 400 people in a room. <laughs> oh, so I think you're in my seat. Oh, sorry, buddy. There was no confusion about allocated seating <laughs> in that place. In fact, I said I had, one, I had my friend there who showed up as a favor. All right. And his job was to go, no, you have to sit next to each other. <laughs> one, one of the guys was like, yeah, I got here and I thought, where's the line? <laughs> Last time I saw a show in this theater, there was a really big line. Because <laughs> that's like the only theater in Launceston. And when you go yeah. there, it's it's full of posters of like really, really big, like... um. Like Melbourne Comedy Festival artists, yeah, hu yeah, massive acts that can that like can sell at, at yeah. least half the seats. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, if you could sell twenty five tickets there, you fucking made it. Mm. Um, yeah. One of the guys was like, "Oh man, I, I got, I thought I got here super early. I thought I came on the wrong day." 
<laughs> you know that I, for a lot of the show, I just sat on the front of the stage and I put the microphone down. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Because you didn't need it. Because it was less of a performance, more of a conversation with 18 people. But, fuck, dude, props to them. They were totally up for it. It was a bit of a weird start, the first few minutes. I think the vibe was, oh, is he upset? That's what it was, is that the 18 people there were worried that I was going to be upset, and I was a little bit worried that they were going to be upset and slightly embarrassed. But once we got over that, it was actually an awesome show. Just went out there and acknowledged it. I thought there were going to be more people here too. Screamed about the bus. And this fucking cunt kept sighing. And I wasn't in his space. He was just upset that he had to sit next to anyone else. <laughs> hey, you want empty chairs either side of you? Why don't you come to one of my shows in Launceston? <laughs> Everywhere else is selling great, thank you. All right? Loosebeers.com. Can you fucking believe I've sold more tickets in fucking Glasgow than I did Launceston? I've never been there. Look. <laughs> God, you got you Launceston guys are lucky that the scenery's nice. <laughs> Because if it was cloudy, I don't think I would have made it home. I would have gone, oh, what a beautiful river to drown myself in. No, it was a good show. It was a financial disaster, but it was a, it was a good show and it builds character. You know, actually, considering all the time I took off and how long I disappeared for, shocking that that's the only show where that's happened. Every other one's been full. I continue to tell myself in the shower when I think about walking on stage to... Yay. Less people at your show than in a typical grade four classroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? It was the perfect classroom size, right? <laughs> like if you, if you want your kid to get peers and individualized teaching as well, that's great. 38 people in my audience, terrible classroom. Also, ho still a horrible disaster. Right, even if I had the average packed Australian overcrowded classroom, that still would have looked like I f fucked in a four hundred seater. You know, this has never happened before. <laughs> the the day before the show, the venue emailed me, and and uh, and and they said in the most polite way possible, they go. Hey, just check the ticket sales for tomorrow. Um, and looks like there's not going to be too many people there. Just wanted to um, make sure that we could get 100% of the venue hire money up front before the show or we'll just cancel it. Because normally how it works is you pay half before the show and then half after. But they must have done the math and been like, well, he's losing a lot of <laughs> he's losing a lot of money on this. Why don't we kind of let him cancel it, and then we'll just take fifty percent, and then no one gets embarrassed? And I said, "No, I'm doing it." And they said, "Are you sure?" And I said, "I've already bought the bus ticket." No, it was good. I'm happy. Next time, fuck yeah, we're doing the pub. Launceston and Gympie, my two smallest markets. Although I think I think um, Gympie had more. I think Gympie had had nineteen. Mm. I think it was. I think yeah, eighteen or nineteen tickets. If you go back and listen to some other some old podcasts, um, but you know, on the bright side, Gympie was almost completely destroyed by a flood. So Launceston will be wiped off the map next. That's what happens if your fucking town doesn't buy tickets to my show. God's wrath will descend upon you and sink your town. Okay, Shepparton, you listening? <laughs> Builds character, man. Nothing will humble you like comedy does, dude. Because I just, I, I just fucking annihilated two sold-out shows in Adelaide. And if I didn't have Launceston in my... Very close memory. 
I'd probably be feeling on top of the moon. You got Ballarat next week. I do. Ballarat, Shepparton, and then do I have Geelong? <clears throat> you got on the 13th of July, you have Ballarat, <clears throat> Warrnambool the following Friday. Ah, yes, we cancelled Geelong. And then Shepparton. The, because of something that will be happening very soon. Um, Ballarat, Shepparton and Warrnambool. Excellent. And that's the, those are the last. I can't believe I'm almost done with the Australian tour. That's crazy. And, and I'm only halfway through the tour. London on the 13th of August. Birmingham, Manchester. Bristol. Am I doing Bristol? Yep. Cool. Bristol, Birmingham, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, let it be, uh, Leeds, Newcastle, and Glasgow. That's what's on your website. And I think we've got Dublin and Belfast as well. I think that'll be announced soon-ish. How cool. I can't wait. I'm booking my accommodation this week and I'm, try- I'm trying to take as little things as possible and I'm trying to keep it as cheap as possible and not so much to save money just because I kind of want to do the backpacker thing, but I don't want to get robbed. So I have to stay in enclosed single rooms. So I found this place in London that is a hostel, but it has single rooms, but it's got shared bathrooms. And that's the cheapest way to do it. So I'm kind of doing that and I'll stay in hostels. I think it'll be really fun. Just doing that solo. I'm going to vlog the whole thing and actually upload them this time. Dude, I made eight vlogs yesterday. From Perth all the way up to like last week. And they're all scheduled. And they're all going to come out and this really f- hilarious thing is going to happen. And then I'm going to do the UK tour. It's all happening. We're back into the swing of things. And it's, and it's still not helping me get over the traumatic memory of Launceston. <laughs> we love Tasmania. We love Hobart. We love Hobart. We love Hobart and we love 18 people from Launceston. One thing, I got to get my asthma puffer. And then I'm going to start screaming about this because this is fucking crazy. Guys, this show is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Which ad copy should we read? Should we read the boys uh, campaign copy male or the boys campaign copy female? Let's open up female and see how, see how, how it goes. Um, Ladies, some of us have, oh, it's from the female perspective. This is good. Ladies, some of us have a name for our man's private parts. Don't we Keelan? Uh, But the good people at Manscaped refer to them as the boys. Now, not every man has children, but every man is responsible for their two boys below the waist, I assume. As a woman, I wouldn't really know. But when his little guys have more hair than they need, make sure that he trusts Manscaped for all his grooming dreams. Uh, Boys need love too. So have him join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com and use code 20 spears. 20 spears. One word. Two zero spears or the yes. two zero spears for 20% off and free shipping. You heard it here first. His boys are back in town. Do not read. Host to talk about personal experience using Manscaped products. How do you go about trimming the boys? How has Manscaped helped your confidence? Tell your story. Well, do I have balls or not? I thought this was the female read. Maybe I'm trans. Early on in my transition journey, I realized that I wanted to keep my nuts, but I did want them to be hairless. You don't think this is good? I, no, it's great. I great. Like it. Okay, 20 spears for the, the, the reeds to be like this. That's the deal. Uh, when, I, when I first transitioned, I knew that I wanted to keep my nuts, but I wanted them to be hairless because I wanted them to be, to be quite feminine, female-looking, bald testicles. And that's why I use the Lawnmower 5.0. Best ball bag trimmer in the game. The, you know, I you know what I thought, Keelan, when I when I looked at my man's nuts after he used the Manscaped 5.0, mm. I thought those are beautiful. I'd like to give them a little suck. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Use code twenty <laughs> twenty spears. Oh, use code so twenty spears. At least there's no hair. Yeah, the true. I, you know what? Whenever I go down on my man, I hate to feel like I'm flossing. Uh, that's why I get him to use the Lawnmower 5.0 and code 20 Spears for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Um, if he doesn't, I get a rash. <laughs> boys need the. <laughs> boys need love too. And for this. <laughs> 
Boys need love too. And for this reason, each trimmer is equipped with skin safe technology. Oh, that'll be good for my labia. And Ellie. <laughs> An LED spotlight and unique features for un- for, di- for different grooming needs. Oh, and these babies are waterproof too. Need I say more? For the basic trim, have him go for the 3.0 and work his way up to the 4.0 and 5.0 for the ultimate grooming experience. Use code 20SPEARS at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. That was awesome. Guys, well done. We got there. And you have to you you have to use the code because otherwise we have to make the reads boring. Mm. Cuz they cuz they go, "Well, look, guys, no one used the code and we think it's because you were pretending to be a trans woman the whole time." <laughs> so, that's the deal. All right? We keep it fun. We keep our tr- Look, on a serious note, I use it all the time. It's great. Okay? Shaved my face the other day. With a different attachment. Anyway, Okay, this is the thing that happened in Launceston that that really upset me. All right, by the way, have a look at this photo of me in the 400-seat theatre. Imagine that with with 18 more people in there. Uh, that was uh, that was brutal. Here's <laughs> here's me sitting down on the stage, performing to Apache front row, front two rows. Yep. Really good stuff. Anyway, all right. Much more importantly, on this show, <clears throat> I've talked repeatedly about. Coffee cup sizes, okay, and cafes and their sizes because nothing shits me more than a cafe that has three cup sizes that goes small, large, extra large, all right? If you have three sizes, Starbucks, I'm looking at you, small, medium, large. All these cafes, they come out with three sizes or they start with two and they call it a small and a large and then people go, well, that's not really a large That's more of a medium. So then they add a third size to make more money, but they don't change the name of the middle one to the medium. They just add an extra large, but there's no medium. If you have three sizes, the one in the middle is the medium. That's the definition. That's how you run a cafe. If you don't do that, shut your shop. That's how it works, all right? Even worse than that, though, is cafes that will do small, large, and then they'll give their big one a silly name, all right? One that I remember, they, it would go small, large, bucket. I'm 30 years old, I'm not going to order a bucket of cappuccino, all right? I'm not a fucking toddler. I'm not here to play games, dude. Make my drink, it's a large. In Tasmania, this is obviously a problem because remember the cafe where we used to live around the corner where I used to go? They had a small and a large, and then they named their third size after a ship. Oh, that's right. What was it? It was like the Buckingham or some... It was like a ship name. Yeah. It's called like the Big Elk, the shop. Yes. Mm. And the the third size was the the Buckingham whatever the fuck. Mm. All right? Now, Launceston, Uncle Whitey took me to his favorite cafe, and this is the most egregious offender of the coffee cup size names I've ever seen in my life. All right? What's the most amount of cup sizes you've ever seen in your life, Keelan? Probably three. Three. Or four, maybe at Gloria Jean's four. Four is the most I've ever seen. If you op- if you even expand it outside of cafes, right, if you add it in every restaurant you've ever been to, anywhere that sells drinks, what's the most cup sizes you've ever seen i would say like mcdonald's might have five Mm. right look at this (laughs) what the fuck this is a real cafe that i went to and when i went in i was like gee that this place is messy all these cups on the counter (laughs) and uncle whitey says no no these are all sizes now if i count these one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then Uncle Whitey, because he's a regular, goes to order and he goes, Do you still have this size? And the guy went, Yeah, it's behind the counter. Eleven cup sizes. Oh my God. There was a Bambi, so which to me looks like a small. Small, yep. A Churchill, which to me looks like a medium. Church- a Grande. 
which to me looks like a large, and then a gladiator, which to me is an extra large. Then they've got a super and a maxi and a short and a tall and a super grande. Short? Yep. And a Megatron. (laughs) I like that. Burn the shop down. Don't call it a Megatron. You're fired. That's not funny. Hi, can I get a latte? Sure, what's ice? Megatron. <laughs> it makes me want to kill myself in front of the owner. <laughs> he fill up the Megatron with my brains. <laughs> Small, medium, large, and then I'll allow an extra large. No more sizes. Four cups max. I'll allow a puppuccino, but it's only for dogs. A Megatron. Look at that shit. It's like a fucking... It's like a giant milkshake cup. You can get coffee in that. And then they had a hundred drink options. I'm not kidding. They numbered all of them and it was on a blackboard... And apparently the guy knows how to make all of them off by heart. And every now and then he'll like, they roast their own beans on site. That's obviously an amazing cafe despite the cup sizes, but he'll roast the beans on site, but it's such a small shop that he'll be standing in front of the counter roasting beans and someone will come in to buy something and he'll tell them to go away. (laughs) I'm roasting beans, brother. Get out of my cafe. I don't have time to think about 100 drinks in 65 different cup sizes. Out. <laughs> I, can I get the gladiator, please? Oh. I, I, I would like to take a gladius and use it to seppuku myself. <laughs> Instead of saying gladiator when I go into, into a shop. And coffee already tastes pretty bad when you add it one or two extra shots. Like, <clears throat> just doesn't mix well. Imagine mm. adding it in a Megatron. Imagine saying, can I get a Megatron? And you'd need six shots just to taste it. Oh, yeah, dude. That's like, that's like, that's three glasses of milk. Like I'm looking at these sizes and I'm, I'm in disbelief. I can't believe it. And it was some of, it was some of the best coffee I've ever had in my life. I think I got a Churchill and I, and I almost pulled my own teeth out saying it, but God, it was good. Churchill based after Winston Churchill? I guess. I don't know why you would call it a Churchill because, like, none of the others are named after presidents. One's a fucking Bambi. You know what really upsets me the most is this guy has 16 different cups and he none of them are small, medium, or large. <laughs> They've all got stupid names. I mean, if you must have nine cups, all right. You can have a couple of silly names, but only because after extra, extra large, I couldn't think of anything reasonable to call a size. All right. But he doesn't like he's got nine cups and he's like, I'm going to make them all silly. Shut the shop. Anyway. That guy has more Cup sizes, then I sold tickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, how long are we going here for? About 29 minutes. Me, when I sell 18 tickets in Launceston, let me yell about it for 29 <laughs> minutes. Guys, look. On my way home from the show that I sold 18 tickets to, all right? I got a free upgrade to a business class flight. Talk about the highs and lows of comedy. All right? This is this is never give up. One day you're walking on stage to a smattering of applause in a 400 seat theater where 18 people have showed up to have a conversation that starts to get good 10 minutes after people begrudgingly accept that you're not about to flip out. And then, just when you thought, just when you've lost all hope, you're getting on a business class flight home. Let me tell you, business class is different. And I'm going to struggle to go back. 
Now, Keelan, you wouldn't understand this. Okay? I don't expect you to understand what I'm, what I'm about to say. But I got on a business class flight. Okay? Have you ever been on a business class flight? Nope. Oh, I can't relate. <laughs> See, these economy class peasants, mm. all right, they, you're lucky that you're even in the room with me. <laughs> Because I've been on a business class flight. In fact, I would like to say that if anyone here listening to this right now travels economy and doesn't travel business, take one earphone out because you only deserve to hear half of this. All right? Left or right, I'll give you the choice, but I don't want your full attention, you know? Because what I'm about to tell you, it, you don't even really deserve to know because it's just for us, us business class customers. When I got on the plane, do you know what the flight attendant said to me? Mm. She said, welcome, sir. Have a seat right over there. <laughs> now, you know how I hate to line up. I'll never get on a plane first. I'll never line up to get on a plane. But you know, when you fly business class, you don't have to line up. They call you first. They go, business class customers come through. Just got straight on the plane. Still got on last because I'm stubborn, while well, lasting in business class, got, still got in ahead of the cattle. <laughs> <laughs> and she, have a seat right over there, sir. I said, thank you. She said, you know what she said? You're welcome. Mm. I got a meal. They were nice to me. When everyone else was seated, the peasants at the back of the plane, you know what they did? They got a little rope and they roped it off. <laughs> and I thought, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't let any of those fucking animals anywhere near me. If I get brushed up against by some poor slob, all right, I'm going to vomit. And I was sitting there and, and I almost had enough leg room. That's, I can't believe it. If I had leg room, I would have come. But I didn't, but that's fine. A normal person would have had leg room. I almost had leg room, and that's the most amount of leg room I've ever had in my life. <clears throat> they brought me food. You know what she did for me? I didn't even have to chew it. The flight attendant, not only did she cut up my food, she actually chewed it for me and then regurgitated it into my mouth like a bird. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> this guy's probably never eaten caviar. It was it was <laughs> something else. God doesn't know what he's fucking talking about. Should we go and get some KFC, Governor? <laughs> Ever since I flew on that business class flight, every time I see Keelan, I I imagine him wearing a top hat with the top bit. <laughs> blown up and on the side and he's got fingerless gloves and he's got soot all over his face and he's carrying a little chimney, a chimney sweep. Hello, governor, should we do the podcast? That's what happens when you fly business class. You just, are you, you just fully understand that you are better than everyone else. Now, did I, did I pay for the business class flight? No. Can I afford to fly business class again? No. Have I flown economy since? <laughs> yes. But the point is, once you fly business class once for free, thanks to a free upgrade that your friend used their points on for you, <laughs> you come to the realisation. <laughs> Look, me getting a free upgrade may have been an exaggeration <laughs> because me saying, oh, he got a free upgrade, that must mean he flies a lot, which I do, but not that much. What actually happened was... Um, I accidentally booked a flight back to Melbourne from Hobart and then had to cancel it. And then my friend booked uh, a flight for me using his points. And then unbeknownst to me, surprised me. And it was a business class flight. And I'm so stupid. I didn't realize until I sat in the chair. <laughs> I looked at my ticket. It said business on it. It said one F. I'm like, oh, one F. I've never been that close to the front before. And then, and then the woman was like, here you go, sir. <laughs> And I went, cool, blimey, a fucking business class. Thank you very much, governor. 
And I took off my fingerless gloves and she gave me a fresh wet wipe and I wiped the soot off my face and I came to the realization that I'm better than everyone in economy. Did you say thank you to your friend? Oh, yeah, I texted him very much. I said, oh, blimey, governor. You're my favorite customer. That's why, that's why I love to sweep your chimney, in it. I thought you must have just paid, you know, when they offer you to, like, bid for the business class. No, I've never, I've never even done that. When you, when you fly, if you don't know, you wouldn't get it. Uh, a, a few of you peasants probably still dreaming about getting on a Tiger flight. Guess what? They went under, all right? Um, when you fly, you do have the option to bid for a business class flight. So you pay for your ticket and then you can... There's like a sliding scale. So business class can cost like two grand sometimes, but you can say, oh, I'll pay an extra $200. And if that, if you've bid the most, you can fly business because the chair is empty anyway. Apparently the secret is not to bid the minimum. You just bid like $5 over the minimum and you usually always get it. That's, that's the trick. Not that I've ever done that because... You know, maybe if I sold 23 tickets in Launceston, I might give it a crack. But no, someone else used their flights to upgrade me. And I got treatment that I just did not deserve at all. You, you know, when they checked in with me the whole time. Did you know that they have sparkling water on the planes? I didn't. But I was guzzling that shit down. I had so much sparkling water, I reckon I could have floated the rest of the way. If we went out, I could have just floated and held the plane up. Actually, I just would have grabbed some of the business class customers and, you know, who needs the rest of these economy grubs? When the plane lands, when you're in business, whole different experience. There's actually a button that you can press to vote how bumpy the landing is going to be and all the business class customers get to vote and we all voted bumpy and we heard all the, we heard all the cattle screaming up the back. <laughs> Because the for the front of the plane, the you know, because you know how planes they've got their fur, their wheel, the front wheel is near the front of the plane, and then they've got two wheels near the wings and the back of the plane, and that's and the front wheel hits first, and then the other ones. The front wheel actually is the only wheel that has suspension, and that's to make the landing smooth for business class. Then the other wheels, we voted to turn the suspension off, so people were spilling their drinks. A baby was dropped on the floor. We were laughing. <laughs> then we get off right we get to stand up and you know what the the flight attendant does they stand in the way of everyone else and they make sure that no fucking dirty poor grubs step foot into the business class lane because that's the worst when you fly and everyone stands up into the aisle and then you just you're just on the runway for 20 minutes and you just got some fat cunt Who's, it's his first flight ever standing in the aisle rubbing his armpit in your nose because he wanted to pick his bag up. He can't even get to it. It's down the front of the plane because the dickhead's bag was too big. They protect you from that in business class and no one in business class stood up early because they all know what it means to fly. And then they got my bag down for me. They gave it to me and they said, have a wonderful evening, Mr. Spears. She knows my name. Got off the plane, walked off. I thought, what an amazing thing. Anyway, then I'm <clears throat> walking down the hallway. Been walking for like five minutes. You know how I walk quick. I'm so tall and I walk fast. I almost get to baggage claim. Flight attendant taps me on the shoulder. Sir, you forgot this. Gives me my water bottle. She chased me down off the plane, down the hallway to give me back my water bottle. If that was biz if that was economy and I left my infant son on the plane, they would have drowned it in the toilet and laughed. They would have put its head in the toilet and then turned on the, the suction and its face would have gotten ripped off. And then they would have given it back to me. No face. Faceless baby gone, ha ha, you poor. Now your baby is gonna be as ugly as your bank account, brokey. Get out of here. <laughs> But because I flew business, she chased me down the airport and gave it to me. That's service. And then, and then she said, by the way, you also, you also left uh, your complimentary mint. And she regurgitated it into my oh mouth. My God, and that's what it's like to fly business. Did you see Milo Yiannopoulos have a go at me on Twitter? No. You didn't see this? X, formerly Twitter. Yeah, sorry, X, formerly Twitter. Um, 
That's Dude, so good. This was the weirdest interaction I've ever had with any with anyone, right? Um, he follows me, which is probably a, a red flag. But uh, I ch- I went to Adelaide and I took my mum, and it was lovely. I might I've talked too much about touring. I might talk about that later, but uh, in a different episodes. But I went to Adelaide and I took my mum, and it was just me and mum, and we had a lovely time. I booked an extra day so that we could go around because she's never really travelled much, um, and sh- we've never done that. So I thought it would be a lovely mother and son trip, and it God, it was lovely. It was really, really nice. We went to an art gallery. We went to cafes. We wandered around Rundle Mall. I showed her some places she'd never been to. She was stoked. We had an excellent time. And then we went home. And when I went home, I posted a few photos. I posted on Twitter. Uh, It's a photo of me and my mum in an elevator looking at the roof. And there's a mirror there. And then me and my mum at an art gallery and, there, and there's a room that was full of red yarn and it's a beautiful photo of my, of my mother whom I love. And then it's her standing in front of a, a painting of Australian landscapes, so red rocks by an Aboriginal artist, beautiful painting. And then it's a photo of us standing in front of the, the Rundle Mall balls and oh, yep. a photo of our reflection. And I posted, flew mum to Adelaide for the weekend and we're having a lovely time. Right, okay. Milo Yiannopoulos quote retweets this and goes, "Just a lovely, absolutely satanic weekend with mum." <laughs> what? What? I know. The photo is me in an elevator, <laughs> mum in an art gallery, mum in an art gallery, me and mum reflected in some Rundle Mall balls. This guy. Who, by the way, is is no longer gay. He's a reformed gay. He's cured himself of being gay, he reckons. Uh, goes, just an absolutely satanic, lovely, absolutely satanic weekend with mum. So how about this? I respond. He gets uh, 118 likes, right? Oh, so Milo fell off. Milo fell off big time. If this was 2016, I would be sweating. <laughs> <laughs> but those times are over. And it's a big, it's a big long slow, steady decline for our friend Milo. I responded to this and I said, we went to an art gallery, bro. Here's a few more pictures I took. (laughs) How about you post a picture of you having a nice day with your mum? And then every single photo I posted was a photo from the same art gallery of just paintings or statues of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Because he said we had a satanic weekend. So I said, here's all the photos of the Lord himself. Yeah. We went to an art gallery, bro. Here's a few more lovely pictures I took. How about you post a picture of you having a nice day with your mum? Yeah. 250 likes ratio owned. Ratio. Doubled him. Ratio. Get ratioed. Dude, ima- could you even imagine me ratioing Milo in 2016? It couldn't be done. Mm. All right. How about you post a picture of you having a nice day with your mum? He said, she's dead, you c- <laughs> And then I wrote, well, at least she's not here to see this ratio. (laughs) And then I deleted that and said, may God rest her soul. Oh, boo. Yes, I know. Spears fell off. I know. (laughs) That would have been really funny, but I couldn't do it. (laughs) Oh, you actually respond to him though? I said, may God rest her soul. <laughs> and that that got even more likes than, than his reply. And I did that because I knew it would shit him so much more than me actually being mean. Because mm. there's dunking on someone and then there's putting a little thought in their fucking brain that makes them feel like they were actually an asshole <laughs> in front of their followers. And then everyone else goes, this is weird. Because as weird as his people are, even they were like, why would you make fun of a guy hanging out with his mum? Does he still follow you on X, formerly Twitter? He still still follows me on X, formerly Twitter. Good Good on him. Fuck, he fell off big time. You know, he got banned from coming into Australia after he made comments about the Christchurch shooting. Is that why he got banned? What did he say? I don't know exactly, but the um, Department of Home Affairs... 
made a statement. Uh, oh. The former Minister of Immigration, Citizenship, blah, 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 said Milo Yiannopoulos will not be allowed to enter Australia for his proposed tour this year. His comments on social media regarding the terror attack are appalling. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Interesting. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, he works with Kanye West now. Did you know that? I didn't. He works with Ye. And he helps run his business or or something. I don't know. But he, he's mostly on Twitter talking about how he used to be gay and how he's he's not anymore. But he never talks about being with women. So I think he's just a, yeah, an, he an incel or, or a vol cell. He was married. He was uh, engaged to a black guy. Black guy, yeah. Uh, but uh, but he's been cured from uh, from from two great alt right sins: being gay and in interracial relationships. <laughs> So he's he's working on himself a lot, and uh, and it's good to see him do doing well. That's so funny. I think it was because of the photo of my mum in the in the room with red yarn. Yeah, it looks with, like a blood splatter room. Does it? That's it, what people, I thought it was. Uh, people just see stuff and they go, "It's evil." It was just like a Japanese woman spinning yarn in a room. I looked it up because I was like, "Oh, maybe this guy knows more about art than I do." And I actually have accidentally taken a photo of my mum in some satanic art piece but it's just some weird japanese woman just fucking making a spider web out of yarn it, d- it has no meaning behind it hmm. it's one of those those art pieces that get heaps of government funding because they say nothing so they can't offend anyone or so you would think until you post a photo of your mum looking nice on twitter anyway episode 350 ratio coming up how many weeks away is that well i think the actual live show is in three weeks isn't it I think so. Yep, the actual performance of it, but yeah. then the release of it will come out later. Uh, and I imagine we might have to censor it a little bit um, for YouTube, but yeah, we'll put it uncensored on Patreon. Twenty six, so not not that long. Wow, nineteen days. That's crazy. And then pretty much the week after that, I go to the UK. Busy, busy times. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. The episode three fifty, it's going to be good. We've been planning the show. Um, we've also got some merch coming up very soon. We just got our designs. Fully locked in. We're going to get the final files off the designer. And I think it's some of the best merch I've ever made um, since the Death Threats Don't Scare Me shirt, which is probably the last piece that I did that I was like, that's a fully complete package that I love for merch. Um, this is, I think, is even better. And it's, it's uh, yeah, really cool. So we might even put that on sale. Fuck, could be next episode, maybe the one after. As soon as possible, as soon as we get all the files back and ready to go. Patreon uh, will get it first. Patreon will get it first as always. And have yeah. we spoken about it on the public episode when we hit 600 Patreon supporters, what we're going to do? I think we only spoke about it on the Patreon episode. Oh yeah. That was just you and me. Yeah. We're going to go to a psychic or a fortune teller. Yes. Yes. This is a great fortune idea. Fortune teller. That's what it was. We're going to go, we're going to go to a, a fortune teller. All right. When we hit 600 Patreon supporters, which I think is only like 30 something away. Which is which is almost uh, two Launceston shows away from <laughs> from <laughs> uh, getting there. So once we have six hundred patrons, Killen and I are both going to go to a fortune teller. We haven't decided how we're going to do it. We might do it separately. We might do it together. We'll we'll see what we want to do. Um, we'll us and the Patreon supporters will convene mm-hmm. and figure out what we're going to do. And who we're going to see. And we'll kind of plan it, make it a group project, pick our psychic, decide what questions we want to ask. Like, do we want to go to a psychic? Do we want to go to a fortune teller? Um, if we go to a fortune teller, are we asking about the podcast? Are we asking about our love life? What are we asking about? Like, what do we want to know? Are we testing them? Because that's a funny thing as well. Like, maybe we could, have, we could both go to the same psychic and one of us goes in with a completely fake identity and the other one goes in completely honestly, and we see. Yeah, let's do that. If they're real, but are we recording these conversations? Um, yeah, we would have to. Mm. So we pr- we would have to pick a psychic who's okay with being recorded, because yeah. um, I don't want to. I don't think it's even legal to secretly record people like that. Um, so we'll do that, and that's going to be for 600 Patreon supporters, yep. which is going to come up very soon. So if you're looking for a reason to jump on, it's time to jump on. Um, I think we're going to end it there, man. Yep. Uh, come see me in the UK. Come see me in, uh, what's the next show? Ballarat? Ballarat on Friday. On Friday. Ballarat. I'll see you very soon. 
And uh, I'll talk to you right now on Patreon. Have a shit one. Bye.